Amber Michelle here, and Jezebel's Tale, I guess, back with another video. And um, if you're thinking that I look a little bit different today, then you would be right. I got my hair cut today and I did something different. I was feeling adventurous this morning and decided to um, get a pixie cut for the first time ever. So yeah, anyway. Um, I think it would be pretty cool. Let me spend even less time dealing with my hair, hopefully, and more time on other things and just not fussing and stressing about my hair. Hi, you. Um, and, you know, I just think it's kind of cute and fun. I like the way it frames my face. I'm not sure about this part. Sometimes I feel like it gets in my face a little more, so when this part gets just a teeny tiny bit longer, it'll be easier to tuck it behind my ear. I might like that just a tiny bit better, but I was the one who told the stylist to put it at that length, so, you know, it's all good. It's all experimenting and playing around, having fun, but overall, um, I really love it, and uh, I think that it'll be cool, but that's not what this video is about. Mm. I love green juice. No, what I want to talk about today is something that I don't think is talked about a lot in the raw vegan community, and I think that it's important to address because maybe other people out there are going through it. And so what I'm going to talk about today is um, emotional detox. Oftentimes you hear people talking about like when you go raw vegan or maybe even vegan but especially if you go into raw vegan that you might have um, detox symptoms uh, specifically more physical detox like maybe flu type symptoms or increased energy one day and fatigue the next day or um, you know just feeling unpleasant things that you might deal with um, during a detox but the other side of it the emotional detox which is something I think I was dealing with or I've been dealing with for the over the last week or so it really came to a head last weekend I think for me when I, I really started to kind of pinpoint that that may have been something going on not to downplay like if you're dealing with other problems as I was dealing with some um, you know if you're dealing with that you know, those are legit reasons to feel emotional, you know, or to feel, you know, accept and embrace however you're feeling, acknowledge that because your feelings are valid, but also know that if you think you might be going through emotional detox, that might help you to just kind of be able to make some sense of it and know that maybe it's not going to last forever and that it's a temporary thing that you're going through. <laughs> and that it will pass and that you're not alone. Other people may, you know, have gone through this as well, myself being one of them. And I know some others have as well because I've, I've talked to some people who, who have dealt with that. And what I mean by emotional detox is just that maybe you feel a little bit extra sensitive to things. Or maybe it's kind of like oh, you almost feel raw in your emotions, like you're peeling layers off of the onion and you're really exposing your true self in a sense, which can be really awesome and really enlightening, but fucking terrifying at the same time. So um, in that sense, excuse my language, but you know, cats, I wish they wouldn't fight when I'm making videos. Anyway, in that sense, um, you know, you might be coming more to terms with who you really are or what you really want out of life. But sometimes, in ways, at least for me, that can make you feel a little more alienated because maybe you're realizing that you're this radically different person than some of the other people around you or than what is perceived as the American norm, you know? Like maybe the American dream isn't your dream or maybe just the ideals that you have, the things that really matter to you or the way that you want to dress, the way you want to express yourself, um, the way that you want to live your lifestyle. And, you know, when you think of, when you picture your dream life and creating that, that it might not be in sync or in tune with, you know, what the majority wants. And, you know, maybe that's not the case for you. But for me, it, it definitely feels like it has been. And I'm sure others may relate, especially the kind of people who do raw vegan seem to be people that are a little outside the box anyway, it seems like. Um, and, and that's a good thing. Like, go weird people. We're awesome. We don't want to be normal. Like, it's 
boring. So anyway, own your weird ass self. Um, but not only that, but you also just feel more exposed and more vulnerable and maybe feelings come up maybe you feel a little more anxious about things or a little more sad or maybe you'll have moments where you feel really really happy and excited following followed by moments where everything sucks you know and maybe you don't know how to make sense of it or maybe you're having a sense of confusion going on um in your life or you're not sure where to go next from here, or what to do from here. Uh, maybe you're having troubles relating to people around you or can, extra communication problems like these cats are having right now. You guys separate. Um, but you know, it could be a variety of different things because you know, you think about it, and I don't really know how to explain this that well in words, but if you're going through this or you have gone through this, you may likely know what I'm talking about, what I mean. Um, because cooked foods, and this isn't to diss cooked foods in any way, but they can have a tendency to be kind of numbing or calm, you know, like it's comfort food, you know, like potatoes, even rice, warm soup, it's all like called comfort food for a reason. And now, you know, like you're not having those things. You're having a lot of cold foods or room temperature. You're having like a lot of fruits and vegetables and big salads and smoothies and things like that, which are all like delicious and life-giving and awesome. But they don't offer that sort of um, numbness that you might get from other foods, if that makes sense. Um, so it's kind of like you're lifting the veil in a way. And you know, I encourage you to just kind of try to go with it some and just maybe a good time to really spend a lot of time on your meditation practice. That's helped me a lot. Uh, if you practice yoga, which I hope you do, you know, go to your mat, do some asana and follow it up with some meditation. Just see where you feel, where you're at at the end of that. Or just spend some time with yourself, you know, just allowing yourself to explore whatever it is that comes up and to take it in and, and not be afraid of it. And I don't have all the answers. Um, I'm, I've been going through this myself and luckily today I, um, I've been feeling a lot better. But, you know, you really, you know, it can be a lot to handle when, you know, you're emotions come up or when you're feeling extra sensitive or when you're starting to really explore things even maybe on a deeper level that could be beautiful and catapult you into something great um but sometimes the steps to get there aren't always so great and aren't always so pleasant but just try to the thing i'm trying to remind myself is like don't expect everyone else to be on the same path as you and sometimes it's frustrating because it can make you feel alienated and alone and i know that but the big thing is like Really, if you can, try to find your tribe, find your circle, find your family or whatever, your friends or actual family, like the people that really get it, that understand you, that understand where you're coming from. Even if they're not exactly the same as you, people that have similar values and ideals as you or similar interests and similar lifestyles, things like that. People at least won't think that you're absolutely weird and crazy for whatever's coming up or whatever ideas that you have and things that you want to do. I just know that it probably will pass, meditate, and know that you're not alone. That's all I have today. Peace.